Welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video from sunny Croatia today. Today I wanted to show you these, which are some beautiful ideas of paperweights. So um, these were some various ideas of various different paperweights to make, and today I am going to show you how to make them. So the first thing we need to have for this particular project is a mould. You're going to need some kind of um, uh, hemisphere or paperweight mould. Now I've got the creative glass um, sorry, creative ceramic ones. I've got a large hemisphere and a small hemisphere. Those codes are 958391 and 958390. So 0390 is the smaller one, 391 is the bigger one. And then the heart mould is 958435. These codes will be in the materials at the end, but you've got to have some kind of mould. These ones are great. The nice thing about them is they're quite deep. Now you've got two options for preparing your mould are um, bore on it, which is a boron spray you can get at most of most places like um well most of the glass places i'm sure i know warm glass in england sell it i think um uh, glass studio supplies definitely sell it i'm sure bullseye sell it in america and i'm sure aae sell it in the states um or you can i think you can get it on amazon and places like that too but you can bore on and bore on them or you can just kiln wash them now in the instructions i got i was told to bore on them and i'm not a big thing with boron i don't have anything against it I just don't use it, use it. I'm sure I should watch someone of how to bore on your moulds, but I didn't. I just went ahead and did it. And I think I probably put too thick a layer on. So when I first started doing this, I did it with kiln wash and I much preferred the results than I got with boron. I felt there was a smoother surface, but that might have been my boron application. It may have been too thick. Um, but if you want to use boron, I would suggest watch someone else's video. I found it hard because the mold, boron is white and the moulds were white. So I couldn't see how thick a layer was going on. And because I didn't want the glass to get stuck, I probably went a bit heavier handed than I needed to be. Um, but I'm now going to show you if you want to kiln wash it. This is my top tip for kiln washing, shell, kiln washing um, shelves or any moulds. This is how I do it. Now guys, this is how I kiln wash everything. These, you get them from your garden outlet shops. They're kind of pump action spray things. You put your um, shelf primer with mixed with water uh, as per the instructions inside. Each time I give it a good shake, pump it up, and then I can just spray the moulds. So I do this with kiln shells, with moulds, whatever. And I'll probably just, particularly with these, because they don't have holes in the bottom, because they're um, for casting. And you just need to give them a really good coat and just sort of make sure that you're getting rid of any of the excess. Um, so I just do it outside and you know those are nicely primed now and are ready to go when I need them. So for this particular paperweight you need to first of all by start cutting two layers. So you either need two layers of the round one, two layers of a heart, two layers of whichever mould you're doing. On the bottom layer you're going to want to do a little bit of slurry. Now there's lots of fantastic videos out there doing slurry but basically I have little cups that I kind of reuse in various colours. Um, I'm sort of going with blues and greens you sort of want to make this with powder so glass powder a little bit of water and you're waiting until you get a, a sort of slurry a consistency so then I put this the slurry consistency on the glass and for want of a better word I blob it about I'm gonna clean off this spoon none of this is um, is reactive or although this probably is maybe a little bit reactive but that's um, spring green but I don't think it's going to react with the other glasses I've got. So I'm wanting a bit of blue a bit of green those sort of colours together and I'm probably getting a bit thicker than I need to here but I'm trying to do this quickly. So once you've got your slurry on you can then kind of if you want, sort of mix it up a little bit so that it's not quite so regimented. And then if you give it a tap, you'll see it kind of goes out into a nice sort of tie dyed feeling. So once you've got a layer like that, then you can put it on a piece of tissue and leave it to dry for kind of 20 minutes um, and then come back to it after you've done the next stage. I'm going to do two of these, one in round and one in heart, um, and then we'll go from there. So I've given these some time to dry now, and in the meantime, I've taken the layer, other layer of glass and I've decorated them with Marini on top. So this one's sort of a pink feel. So I've put a lot of pink Marini on and some reddish Marini. We've got our red star flower, um, some red hearts, 
some vortex, some roses, um, some yes, lots of lovely um, pink marine. I've also added a kind of um, some mini um, uh, of the kind of white ones. And then I'm going to put this on top and this will go in the kiln on a tack view so it all tacks together. Because if I tried to put it in the mould now and flipped it, when it started cooking, I think things would start to fall off. And I personally, I, for me, I'd like to get this all tack fused together and do it in two stages before I put it in the mould. So these two are going to go in on a tack, very light tack fuser, stick to tack. And, and then we'll see what they look like when they come out. So here they are out of the kiln, nicely tack fused together. Um, you can't really see the depth yet, but once they're fully fused, to, um, you'll get the kind of depth of the background and then the marini on top. Um, so I filled up the moulds. I used six mil glass, give it a really good clean. You want as little amount as kind of um, divot in there as possible. Um, and then once it's full, I just put the, the, um, the backing piece that way up on top. So for like this mould, I've just cut um, layers sort of fitting in. Um, I have used um, nippers. I have not used the grinder. I don't want any ground edges on this at all. And then I'll put that on top like that. So these were going, it's going to be a very long anneal on this. So uh, yeah, it will go in now. So with this method, what I want to do is build up a layer on the bottom, which is going to feel quite textural. So on the heart, I'm going with, I know, very, very original, but you could always choose different colours. But I'm going to go with pinks and purples. Um, and I just want to sort of do a, a mix. And I really want to keep the, the sort of texture of this. So I put some of the glass tack gel glue around the edge to try and just hold everything in place. And I'm going to build this up with quite a lot of frit and I want to get quite a good layer on of different kind of colours, some transparent, some opal, some darker, some lighter and I might put some finer frit on here as well but I'm really going to try you know trying to get a texture and a feeling of kind of 3D and I want to make sure it goes right to the edge of the piece. So I'm going to do that on that and then on this one I'm going to do it with the greens um, and put a load of green for it and really sort of build it up. It's actually already got some glue on it, which is quite good in a way because it sort of makes it all stick together in a, in a sort of mass and I can really get some height. So I might put some more glue on the other one and I really want to get some height so that it's going to feel 3D within the mould. So I'm going to finish these two off and I'll show you how they are when I'm done. So here you can see they're all done and ready to go in the kiln. Um, the idea is to try and get some high spots and some low spots in the piece to get a feeling of depth. I've also added a bit of this dichroic extract, which you can get from, I get mine from Warm Glass, but probably AAE or somewhere else in America will sell it. Um, that can go on and um, that adds a nice little bit of shine. I've added a few of our French vanilla um, Poppy Marini. I have them, so I like to use them. Um, so these will go in the kiln. Now, because this is going to go back in, on a long anneal for when I full fuse it together. I'm not so worried about annealing it this. It's going to be full fused. It's going to take all the tension out of the glass when that happens. So right at this point in time, I can do a kind of a little bit faster firing schedule on it. Yes, I'm risking that it might break in the kiln, but it's less likely to. There might be some stress in the glass, but when the full fuse happens and I anneal it properly at that stage, it will be fine. So here is this out of the kiln. As you can see, it's got lots of lovely texture and different kind of heights on it. It's lower at places and, and higher at other places. Um, I've then filled this mould exactly like I did the last one, but I'm putting a little bit of an extra chip in a very low point so that it sort of sits more flat. More flat, is that correctly English? Flatter in the mould. So now this will go in on the other firing schedule um, with its friend over here, and we can see how it is when it comes out. So to start with, with this project, again, I've cut um, the shapes of the moulds and I want to put some powders down. So we just want to tack fuse these powders on. Now I just like using kind of a different range. This is, you know, if you don't want to do the slurry and you'd want to just do a bit of kind of um, uh, powders instead, you can do a layer like this. Uh, that was, what was that one? That was cobalt. And this is some light sky blue. I love the colour of light sky blue. It's just so kind of lovely. Um, it's very descriptive. It's lovely. Uh, and then I'm going to put a bit of light cyan because it's a bit lighter. 
a bit of contrast, blob that around a bit. A bit of periwinkle. Oh, I've still got a bit of a stick it down. Periwinkle. And you want to be careful when you're pulling powders from one because light cyan is reacting, periwinkle is not. If I end up putting some light cyan on here and then using periwinkle in a project and there's a bit of light cyan on there, I could get a reaction I don't want. So I'm quite always quite careful to make sure these are empty before I put them back into another one. Um, it's all right if you're using small things. Now this is um, a Venturine Blue and I just want to, oh, probably put a bit more than I meant to, but a little bit kind of here and there on it just to bring a bit of shimmer, a bit of shimmer and shine. And then I also have got some Brit here. This is Steel Blue Transparent. Um, even if it does um, go steel and this firing, later on when it's capped, that will change. So this is also just gonna go in attack fuse now i look at it now and i'm like it could do with a little bit of contrast and i'm thinking what can i put on to contrast and i've got a couple of like french vanilla same this is the medium and i'm just going to put that in there too um and then i need to do this one um now this I've got to do with green. So I'm going to do the same thing here with green ones and then you can come back to me in a moment. So here these are ready to go in the kiln. Well, I just want to add some Marini, but I want to think, because I'm going to put some uprights when this is um, fired, um, there's going to be some uprights going across and I don't really want the Marini where they're going. So I'm just going to sort of roughly have a kind of think. They're, they're going there, just trying to make a little line in it just so I can see and think where they'll be going. I think it's going there as well. So that I put the Marini in betweeny. Ha <laughs> ha, so funny. I made Coral laugh in the background. I roped Coral into filming today. She walked past the studio and I was gonna try and do some self filming. And then I was like, cause, cause you've gone for a walk in the neighborhood, come in and film, spend some time with me. So I'm just going to put some Marini on here and then I'm going to do the same on this one with some green Marini. So here they are, ready to go in the kiln on a tack fuse. So for this particular one, I have cut some strips of six millimetres, so that's double thickness Tecta. Um, I wanted the kind of length to fit kind of three strips this way across in here. I think this is probably a bit high and I'm not going to... Um, I'm going to make sure I keep my Marini in kind of the bottom half of it. Um, and this one here, probably not going to use the whole strip. I've then drawn around them on a strip of thin fire going on a kiln shelf. Um, now, the reason I've drawn around them is I want to put the Marini on the thin fire and then put the Tecta on top. The reason I want to do this is because when you put Marini on top of the glass, they tend to close in. Whereas the underside of the glass, they're kind of more out. I'm hoping you can see that in the image. So here you can see you're getting a much smaller star than here. So because I want the marine to open out, I'm going to fire them this way up, do a long um, bubble squeeze, two hour bubble squeeze, so the glass will settle around and hopefully push the marine open to keep them open. So I'm just going to decorate here and then I'll put these strips of glass on top um, and put them in the kiln to go on a full fuse, but I'll show you them before I put them in. So here they are. I now just need to cap them with this and put them in the kiln on a full fuse. So I got these out of the kiln. I'm afraid I've already chopped them up, but they kind of look like this. You can see the flowers are kind of nicely opened rather than closing in on themselves. Um, so what I then did is I sort of worked them, worked it out and just literally using mosaic cutters, that's these, these are wheeled mosaic cutters, I use them a lot, they're great for slicing marini. Um, I've cut the bits to fit in, you've got to remember that the, you're working upside down so the flowers are going in head first effectively and I've basically cut these and then other strips of six millimetres, so that's the double thickness tector. Um, so, so you know, so one one strip of this, one strip of the um, tector to go in um, and fill up the mould like so. And then I'm just sort of at the ends here. I'm just adding a couple of little bits just to fill up the voids. Um, and then effectively this piece will go 
on top like that. Um, I'm slightly rushing just to show you. I've done the same with this one. This is a bit higher and so it's all kind of sitting a bit on top. I'm not so sure how these will turn out, but we're going to give it a go and have a little experiment together. So that's quite fun. Um, let's put these in the kiln and they'll go on the same firing as the other ones. So effectively for this, I've created this pyramid of glass. This will then eventually go in the mould this way up. But for now, I want to think about it this way up because this will be the top of the paperweight and this will be the bottom. And what I want to do is do pre-fused layers of design so that they'll kind of be built up and you'll get some depth of, of the field. So at the bottom, I want one bit of design and then maybe the next layer up I'll have a bit of butterfly, but I want to make sure that this layer doesn't overlap entirely. I don't want to put the butterfly on top of the flower, otherwise I'm not going to see the flower. So I might want to offset the butterfly here. And then the next layer, I might want to, you know, put some other flowers down the bottom here. So you get the idea that you can kind of layer it up and see different things on different layers. So effectively, each layer will be fused, go on a full fuse with the marini underneath and the glass on top. And then after they're full fused like this, we can stack them together. I'm also going to create a, a, a piece of glass that will go right at the bottom that will just be green to be the kind of base glass for the piece. So I'm going to get that ready in the kiln and I'll show you how it looks before it's fused. So here they are in the kiln, all ready to go on. As you can see, the, the um, marini are under the glass. So the glass is sitting on top and we'll do a two hour bubble squeeze on this. So the glass will sink over the marini, encase the marini and they should keep their shape and design. So we're going to put this on for a nice full fuse now. So here are the layers fully fused together. Um, now I'm going to put them in the mould. I'm self-filming again today, so it's a bit harder than normal. Um, and it was just sort of trying to line them up in a way that I liked. Um, I'm going to give each layer a really good clean before I put them in. You get the idea, I'm sort of lining them up. One on top of the other. And then I'm going to cut a piece of streaky glass, this one I've chosen. Cut a piece of that, which will go on the top as the base. And then it will go on the kiln on a full fuse. So once you've finished in the full fuse, you're going to take them out of the mould. And I'm sorry, I forgot to fill mine when I got them out of the mould. They, if you've kiln washed, they end up with some, some kiln wash residue on them. With the boron, they were totally covered in boron. And I found the re residue much harder to get off. And I ended up even grinding it off um, at a 400 grit on my grinder because I found it so hard. Um, if you don't have a sandblaster, I think with the uh, kiln wash, you could just, you know, hand pad them or just give them a really good wash clean up, make sure you get the, you know, soak the any residue off as best you can. And then they do need to go back in for a fire polish. Um, the fire polish to bring up the shine on them because they've got some texture on them when they come out of the moulds and you want the kind of, you want the shine. The problem is, is thinking about annealing. So when you've got them in the mould, depending on how much glass, you know, you can see these have, you know, the, the, they're about the same, um, they're the same mould but one's ended up taller than the other. And, you know, do I kneel for the whole thickness of the mould, but I know there's air in there. So I just sort of did, um, I chose on mine to do a, um, an, an anneal on the full fuse for two, two and a half, 25 millimetre um, uh, anneal, which is like a four hour anneal. So I thought, you know, it's going to be about that. And also I knew that they were going to go back in again on a fire polish. And at that point in time, I could see the thickness of them to work out what I wanted to do for that anneal. I also know that to get them really shiny, you have to probably go take them slightly hotter and they lose a bit of height. Um, uh, can you see that, Sandra? Um, you lose a bit of height uh, in the fire polishing. So although that this one is starting off at like three centimetres, that's sort of um, three mil um, 30 millimetres, by the end, it's more like kind of two mil um, 20 millimetres, two centimetres. So How that, much is it in inches? In inches, it's, um, I don't like three quarters of an inch to just uh, about an inch. So they will relax a bit. So again, on my full, uh, my fire polish, I've done a four hour anneal 
knowing that they were going to relax down a bit and that you know by the time you actually got to the kneeling the glass was only going to be probably two centimeters that's um, three quarters of an inch thick so that's what i've gone with my schedules please though you need to think about schedules yourself you know you've got to be conservative you may want to take it for a 30 um, um a, a 38 millimeter anneal which is kind of you know more like an inch and a half and that's a six hour anneal so it really depends and this is all bullseye guys the numbers i'm talking about are bullseye if you're doing system 96 you need to look at your annealing charts and do it so annealing is very important to you know think about my schedules at the end are showing a four hour anneal if you think your glass is thicker you will need to go longer on your your annealing and you know as i say in my videos i'm really clear i do not take responsibility for my firing schedules i'm giving you nice projects please look at the firing schedules if they don't make sense or you're you know they i've made a mistake on them which i may have done please don't take them as gospel always look at them check you're happy with them before you use them and always anneal and fire for your kiln so fire polishing you may want to go less less hot than me um, annealing you may want to kneel longer it's entirely up to you so here they are all done um i haven't kind of showed the full process i basically with each one of these i've sandblasted them down and um then fire polished them off depending on what temperature fire polish you go to will depend on your end result i'm really hoping you can see this so this one is quite a low temperature which means there's still quite a bit of texture on the surface, which means you don't get a kind of real clarity of being able to see into the inside of the glass because there's still quite a bit of texture on the surface. This is kind of your next stage. As you can see, these are all the same mould. So they've got, it's got slightly bigger each time and slightly less high. So this one is, is um, I'm trying to make sure you can see, this one is less... Um, it's kind of got thinner than this one because it's relaxed a bit because I've gone to a higher temperature and the surface has got shinier and you can see into it a bit more. Then the third stage is like this, where as you can see, it's got even bigger. This you can see into beautifully. There's no distortion on the surface at all, but it's getting pretty flat. It's kind of, it, it's not got the kind of depth that everyone loves in a paperweight, but it's a hard compromise. Do you want to go and keep, you know, have the clarity in the glass and be able to see really kind of beautifully inside them? Or do you want the sort of height of it? So my personal feeling is that this one needs to go in again and relax a bit and the surface get a bit kind of more polished. You can kind of go lower and slower and hopefully it won't, the glass won't relax so much. But it's a, it's a kind of hard one to know. I didn't actually show you making this one at all, but um, this was just an idea uh like the, the the big flower one which you haven't seen yet but just doing it with a layer of fishes so again this was so Sandra, you can go back to the uh -huh. fishes um it, this was basically full fusing fish into six millimeter glass and then putting them on a layer higher in the in the um in the process so that you've got the kind of ground then glass then fishes and then um, glass on top um, so this one, which is kind of, it's relaxed a lot. I mean, this was like four centimetres thick and now it's probably like two and a half. So it's relaxed a lot. The whole pattern is, is stretched. And I think I went a bit big in the pattern. I wish I'd used not our XL butterfly, but our normal butterfly wings in the process. But look at our little bumblebee, it looks fantastic. And it's so hard to see, uh, probably on the camera. But the depth in this piece is amazing. I mean, I'm so pleased with this technique. And considering this is my first sort of go at it, 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 needs, um, it needs a lot of work. You can't really see the mushroom down there now. And the bird, all you can see at an angle is a, is a quite a, you know, is an eye poking out, um, which I think in this light is gonna be hard for you to see, but it's, it's in there. Um, but it's a really lovely kind of idea and technique to take further. I did have an issue that the base piece of glass really shrunk. Um, I think maybe I should have gone with two layers and a bit thicker to give it a bit more kind of um, space to kind of go over the whole mould. So that's not a particularly lovely finish there, not having the base piece of glass covering the whole a whole area at the bottom. Um, on to other ones. So these, I love these. I think they've turned out brilliantly. It's going to be, again, really hard to see it on the camera. Um, 
but you've got this sort of feeling of depth in, in them where you can sort of see the piece. They're less interesting from above, they're more interesting, they're pieces you want to pick up and have a look with side on. And it's the same with the poppies. So those are the poppies which look brilliant. And it's a really nice feeling of depth. The interesting thing about this one, which I find is probably going to be impossible to see on the camera, but with the poppies, because I felt there was a bit of skulls on the back, I sandblasted the back before I put them in for making the, the actual paperweight. And with the blue, I didn't. And with the blue, there's no, it's all beautifully, beautifully clear. And you can't really see, you know, you can see there are lines of pattern going through it but you can't actually see that they're sort of stuck to a piece of glass. Where the poppies, there is clear, in technical terms, veiling between the pieces of glass because of the sandblasting. Now, it was interesting. I, when I was looking at it, I'd forgotten I'd sandblasted the poppy and not the blue, and I thought, oh, I must have, there must have been scars on the glass, and that's why the, you've got this veiling between, but actually it wasn't. It was the sandblasting that's caused the veiling. So... I think my top tip here would be do this fuse on a freshly washed kiln shelf, don't use kiln paper, and then don't sandblast, just clean it as well as you can. Um, and then you probably wouldn't end up with this veiling and you'd just end up this beautiful kind of 3D poppy garden. Don't get me wrong, it's still gorgeous now, but it would be even kind of nicer with um, without the sort of veiling, um, which is, I don't know, Cassandra, can you see it at all? Yeah, you can, okay. Yeah. So that was great. These two, I sort of love in a kind of textural way. I think they're, um, um, let's put something else out so you can see which I'm talking about. But, you know, they, they're great. I think they need to go back in and have a bit longer of a firing to um, to really bring up the depth and the, the kind of clarity of them. But I sort of do worry about them losing their um, their feeling. I mean, the very simple. So these two were the, the, were the ones where we did the slurry first, then put the marini on and had the two layers of glass and the marini. And the marini do float beautifully kind of above the bottom layer. And it's really kind of nice. Um, I like here that they've slightly wrapped around some of the marini, but you've still got the sort of feeling of them floating. And there's a lovely feeling of depth in them. Um, and then just going back to this one, I just, I think this is a really kind of clever idea that you can take, you know, really far and do many, many things with. So um, I hope that that gives you some ideas. I've got another one I want to show you, which were my disasters. So I was going to do something with dichroic, and I thought I'd do some pot melt dichroic. Being inspired by a YouTube video, and then I saw Jameson, big shout out to Jameson. I saw you doing um, pot melts, and I thought I'd do some. And I tried to do some dichroic pot melts. Now, I'm trying to get it right. These two were dichroic pot melted straight into the mould. So the dichroic is like kind of glittering all over the 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 um all over the kind of the whole block of glass. It's sort of it's just sort of a glittery piece of glass. But I don't know, I just don't think it's particularly nice. The whole thing about paperweights is you want clarity in them and you want depth. And I don't think you get that in this. And this one I I um got bubbles in it. I tried to put some marini in the bottom and I just don't think it looks particularly interesting. And then these two, what I did was I pot melted dichroic glass onto a, onto, uh, onto a, um, a heart of, of black glass um, and then full fused on top. And it's still just not doing anything for me. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like, mm, I'm just not really that, you know, compared to... Yeah that compared to that i know which gets my vote I, I like this more i mean they're quite interesting this one is a, the, my ultimate disaster you know i tried to put marini and, and dichroic in it together and i just i didn't think it would work i think it's two different mediums that don't work i wanted it to look like a starry night these were our star marini but well, i just don't think it works um the other thing i had was i ended up with a hell of a lot of dichroic glass stuck in the bottom of the pots um, and I saw from Jameson's thing that he tried pot melts with um, boron and then he ended up with boron contamination in it. And I felt that for what I got out, I had to waste a lot of dichroic. I would say a third was wasted in the bottom of the pot melt. And I just think that's too much dichroic wastage 
for something that's not so good. So on the whole, I'm not, you know, bothered about that croak. I much prefer the floral ones. And I'm not just saying that because I make beautiful floral marini. Um, but I just, you know, I think this, this collection are amazing and beautiful and fun. And I think they're very sellable and they don't take a lot of marini to really give you a big impact. You know, not many marini in that, hardly any in there at all, like five pieces. And even in these, there's not too many marini. Um, and I think this, you know, they can come up with some really fun ideas and it's all about building the layers and getting the depth. Um, and uh, yeah, I think these could be really fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's quite a long one. I started off with the idea of showing you how to make these and then my little mind gets carried away and I'm like, oh, I could do that one and oh, I could do that one and I could do that one. And then you end up with this. <laughs> so. I hope it's not um, been too long a video by the end and I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have, please subscribe.